Welcome to Cool Talk. Today we talk about the European age of exploration of the Americas. Back in Greco-Roman times, Europeans gained an understanding of the geography of China, India, North Africa, and the Near East. 500 years before Columbus, the Norsemen and Vikings from Scandinavia had landed up in Greenland, Iceland, and New England. Um, but they built no settlements, no colonies, and eventually returned. The Crusades would reinvigorate trade, commerce, and exchange of culture. And then, of course, there was Marco Polo, an Italian, who went over to China and actually lived with the Mongol Emperor Kublai Khan for a while. And his adventures and his stories brought a new found interest in all the spices and riches of the East. The Europeans were fascinated what they could acquire from Asia. And while everybody in Europe was interested in silk and wares and herbs and spices, there was a newfound interest in the gold. There were exaggerated stories of roofs in China that were made of gold, and the Europeans wanted it. But as the Muslim invasions took over during those centuries, Europe became more and more isolated. Things came to a head in 1453 when the Turks took over Constantinople. This put a chokehold on all European commerce. At this time, Columbus was two years old. While Europe suffered, merchants in the Italian republics of, and kingdoms of Genoa and Venice became very, very rich. They built trading posts and they were able to purchase things in the East and sell it to the rest of Europe. The problem was that these goods would pass through so many hands that by the time it got to you, it would be very, very expensive. These merchants acquired more and more money and built bigger and bigger ships. The rest of the Europe decided to do something about it and things were about to change. There was more use of the inventions of the compass and the astrolabe, and then of course, the influence that was left behind by Prince Henry, the navigator. Henry was from Portugal, and he dedicated his life to study the sea. He opened a naval school, hired the best captains and map makers. And through the Portuguese expansions towards the west, the Canary Islands, the Azores, and the Madeiras were discovered and settled. So Prince Henry's idea was from Portugal to explore the coast of Africa. And from Portugal, he had hopes that they could sail south, go around the tip of Africa and find a way to get to the Indies. And this would break the monopoly that the Italians had in the Mediterranean. And you might think, well, that's pretty easy. All you have to do is keep going south, uh, stop at the coast for supplies and keep going. But keep in mind that while you're sailing along a part of the land that you don't know, strong winds would push you to the west. And when you don't know what's out there, you have to be very, very brave to continue on this track. Well, anyway, Prince Henry would die in the year 1460. At the time, Columbus was about nine. When the Genoese sailor Christopher Columbus became of age, his theory was this. Instead of going around Africa, why don't we sail west around the earth and come out the other side and reach Asia? Today, we know that that's ridiculous. But in his day, imagine this. Let's say you didn't know that the Americas even existed or the Pacific Ocean. And let's say that the land up there, Greenland, you think is north of Asia. Well, then the earth would look like this. And if you sail away from Spain and go west, well, then it makes sense. You could come around the other side and reach Asia. Not a bad plan. And because we spoke so much about Portugal, why didn't Columbus approach the Portuguese? Well, he did. He was in Portugal for about seven years. He had married a Portuguese woman, had a son in Portugal, and he begged the king of Portugal to sponsor his trip. The king, of course, was King John, or in Portuguese, King Joao, who turned Columbus down. Finally, Columbus goes to Spain and spent another disappointing seven years frustrated talking to the king and queen of Spain and anybody else who would listen, 
that's to please sponsor his trip to the in Indies and he would bring them untold amounts of riches in spices and herbs and gold, making them very, very rich and also doing God's work by Christianizing all the natives of Asia. Now, King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella, understandably, were very, very busy. They were fighting a war, but they didn't say no to Columbus. They just delayed him. Nevertheless, Columbus sent his brother to talk to Britain or France, anybody who could help him out. Then in 1487, Bartholomew Diaz from Portugal sailed, fought the winds and reached the southern tip of Africa an area eventually known as the Cape of Good Hope. Well, this put a damper on Columbus's plans. But then suddenly in 1492, the king and queen of Spain won the war in Granada, and now there were new possibilities. They sponsored Columbus, who sailed out in August, and on October 12, 1492, he landed in the Bahamas, probably Watling Island or around there. And he thought, he was in the Indies. Now, this was a, a, a notable naval achievement. Look at this. If Columbus had sailed west from Spain, he would have reached part of the United States. But instead, he went south to the Canary Islands. And from there, he sailed west and reached the Americas. Now, why did he do this? It was basically to catch the correct trade winds. Columbus had been well-traveled, and he had an idea of the winds. Now, this route to and from the Americas, from Europe, is still used today. Well, Portugal was not happy, and because of a previous treaty, they laid a claim to those lands over there by the West. So, an agreement was made, the Treaty of Tordesillas. Anything that was uh, 250 miles west of the Azor Islands would belong to Spain. Anything east of that would belong to Portugal. And this is why that this area of South America, Brazil, was colonized by the Portuguese. So a lot of trade went back and forth between Europe and the Americas. But Columbus, of course, was very, very disappointed. Where are the Indies? Where are the Asians? Where are the kings and the queens? What are all these natives with huts and so on and so forth? And then came competition. Vasco da Gama from Portugal. He sailed around Africa and reached India. And then came Pedro Cabral, trying to duplicate what Vasco da Gama did. He sailed around, but he went a little bit too far west and discovered Brazil. Now, an Italian sailor named Averigo Vespucci traveled through the Americas, uh, but historians dispute if he actually traveled that extensively. Nevertheless, he made a claim that this was actually a new land, but this was something that Columbus himself had said a couple of years earlier, that it was a new land, but a new land near Asia, and Vespucci himself thought he was near Asia. Nevertheless, somebody named these new lands America. While Columbus did find some gold, he did not find the Indies, and he kept on trying. Four voyages in all. He enslaved the Indians when he couldn't find any gold. Wars and mutinies broke out. He was shipwrecked in Jamaica for a year. And finally, nearly blind with arthritis in his spine, Columbus died in 1506, disappointed and feeling like a failure. In 1510, from Spain, Vasco Núñez de Balboa establishes the first Spanish settlement on the mainland on the Isthmus of Panama. He explores and becomes the first European to see the Pacific Ocean. In 1513, Ponce de Leon reached Florida. And in previous videos, we talked about Hernán Cortés, Francisco Pizarro, reaching Mexico and Peru, conquering the Aztecs and the Incas. We also spoke about De Soto and Coronado, exploring parts of the United States. In 1519, a Portuguese sailor named Ferdinand Magellan would lead 243 Spaniards. They would accomplish the first voyage around the world. There were mutinies. They almost died of starvation and thirst. And after three years, out of five ships and 243 men, only 18 men and one ship survived. In my videos of Native Americans, I mentioned the explorations of the French, the Dutch, and the English. But needless to say, the world had changed. It was the first global economy. Everything seemed possible. 
Unfortunately, one of the consequences was the uh, genocide, the enslavement of the Native Americans, and millions of them also died of smallpox. Then, the Portuguese, who began the slave trade from Africa in 1441, expanded it into the Americas. This would continue for at least another 400 years. If you look at this map, you see the expansion of the African slave trade. Spain would acquire a huge empire of land. Look at all this territory. And Portugal would put trade posts all along the coast of Africa and parts of Asia. When you get a chance, uh, go back to this part of the video and just pause on this picture right over here so you can get an idea of the Colombian exchange. All the goods that went back and forth between Asia, the Americas, Europe, and Africa. There was a commercial revolution. Trade and new business methods were acquired, especially in banking and insurance. Prices would go up in some areas. Modern capitalism would develop. There was an economic system of mercantilism. The standard of living in Europe would go up every day. Christian missionaries spread all across the Americas, and a new race was born, the Mestizo. And oh, the money, the surge of the Dutch and English East India companies and Lloyds of London. The stock companies were being introduced. There was exchanges to buy and sell stocks, an increase in coinage of money, mercantile capitalism, an increase in power among the rich. All of this influenced the nations. On paper, they were self-sufficient and had lots of gold and silver as the colonies supplied all the raw materials that they needed. Suddenly, the medieval castles of old seemed small, and great mansions and castles and gardens took their place. The opulence, the decadence. Europe was so rich, but these rich families would eventually pay the price as revolutions broke out across the Americas and France. And we're going to talk about these democratic revolutions in my next video. But in the meantime, thanks for watching. Subscribe or comment below. This is Cool Talk.